one of the members of congressional leadership that was in that behind the scenes footage during the siege in the Capitol was Congressman Jim Clyburn of South Carolina. He's the House Majority Whip, and he joins me now. Congressman, we've seen the images of you in the room with the Speaker, uh, with uh, Senate um, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. I, I just wanted to get your sense of what it was like in that room. It's such, um, it's such a strange and surreal setting. There's such high degrees of adrenaline. You're watching people think out loud and process in real time. What was it like to be there? Well, thank you very much for having me, Chris. You're right. You used to write words, surreal. You know, I grew up here in South Carolina. I graduated college, started my professional career as a public school teacher, teaching history in the Charleston County Public School. I taught my students the fundamentals of what this country is all about. And I usually contrast what was going on in this country to what was going on in third world countries to get my students to understand that this country is far and above all of that. This calls all of that into question with me. I could not believe what I was seeing. Even when I left the floor, uh, I heard the noise outside, uh, and, and we went off into this undisclosed location. But until I watched the television monitors, I just could not ever believe that I would be seeing that. And I watched Nancy Pelosi uh, interact with the vice president, interact with the other uh, Republican leaders of the Senate, uh, McConnell, uh, Scalise, uh, Troon. We were all in that room working on one accord. Only when we came out of the room, when I started hearing all of this foolishness, uh, that nobody uh, in that room or at least the Democrats were not doing what needed to be done to preserve the integrity of the peaceful transfer of power. I'm so glad that people are now getting to see uh, all this video, because they now see that we were doing what was necessary, did not have any support from the White House to get it done. Right now, the, the images that we're showing, I don't know if you can see it, is, is a leadership huddle, uh, a bipartisan leadership huddle, and bicameral. So you've got uh, Senate, House, Republican, Democrats all, all around. Um, and in the image that's sort of slightly more zoomed out, you can see Steve Scalise. Uh, he's wearing, a, I think, an American flag mask. You know, he would later go on to basically say, and this became a Republican talking point that has been off repeated, you see him right there, over and over again, that somehow Nancy Pelosi was responsible, that Nancy Pelosi didn't, she declined the National Guard, that she didn't do anything. And I mean, I, I just got to ask you how it felt to hear that over the last 18 months when you know they all stood in the room and watched her call, literally call for the National Guard. Look, yes, Nancy was calling uh, the, the uh, mayor uh, of Washington, and I remember very clearly saying to her, I said, Madam Speaker, uh, all the information I get is that the authority that the mayor once had with the National Guard here in D.C. is not there anymore. This administration has taken that away. And the Spinney Hoyer got on the phone and called the governor uh, of Maryland. Um, and I said to Nancy, look, give Northrop a call. Uh, Virginia is just as close to us if not closer uh, than Maryland. And she did get on the phone. She did uh, talk to him. Uh, and they were doing everything they could. They just did not get the kind of support that we should have gotten from the White House. And we all now know why. There's also some, uh, some footage in there that suggests that uh, the speaker, particularly uh, who, 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 you know, has, along with... Uh, Senator McConnell at this point, sort of custody of the Capitol, right, as an institution and also physically as a building, is getting brief that the Secret Service is aware that there is a plan for the president to come to the Capitol, that, that, that this may or may not happen, that Secret Service is trying to stop him from. Was that, was that known in that room, that it was a possibility that the president himself might actually descend on the Capitol, essentially to lead the mob? 
Well, we didn't know about the president and what may have taken place uh, in that automobile with him wanting to go uh, to the Capitol. But what we did know, though, was that something untoward was taking place. Because I remember very clearly that someone came mm -hmm. from uh, the Capitol uh, to give us information, and she kept looking at me uh, rather strangely. And finally, I walked off and talked with her. And I was able to go back and say to Nancy Pelosi, we are getting conflicting information. This young lady is telling us what she's been told to tell us, but she doesn't feel mm. or believe it herself because she confided in me that she didn't. And so we were able then to take further ah. steps based upon the information that we were getting as opposed to the information that they wanted us to get. Let me just follow up on that, and I, I don't want to, you know, betray confidences. But when you say they or who, she, who, what was the channel for this information that that was not that was some kind of spin or or obfuscation in your in, in your estimation? Who was well, it? What, what institution was telling you wrong information? Well, uh, the capital, the, the head of all uh, the sergeant arms left within days. Uh, the head of the chief uh, of the. Uh, what we call it, the Capitol Police, left within days. So something untoward was going on. And we saw it huh. uh, when there were members in the mob saying they are on our side. What do they mean by that? Huh. Uh, why is it that they could come uh, and not go to the door with my name on the door but end up at my office in my so-called hideaway? Why, how did they know where that office was? So... There was too much going on there, and I think things are coming out now mm -hmm. that people know that there were some people wearing the blue uniform that was uh, at least sympathetic to what was going on with that mob rather than doing the job that needed to be done in order to protect the Capitol. There's some reporting on that uh, as well at the FBI. This is uh, adjacent. Obviously, I want to be clear with, with people that are watching. There's a bunch of different law enforcement and security apparatuses here. There's the Capitol Police, which is under the control of, of the U.S. Capitol, which is the Congress. Uh, there's, of course, the Secret Service, which is part of the, 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 the federal government under the Department of Homeland Security. There's the FBI, which is under part of the Department of Justice. I'll read to you from this memo that was sent uh, that we've recently unearthed by NBC News through a FOIA. Uh, this is a letter from an unknown FBI insider to a top FBI official. Uh, and this is a week after January 6th that there is at best a sizable percentage of the employee population that felt sympathetic to the group that stormed the Capitol and said it was no different than the BLM protests of last summer. Several also lamented the only reason this violent activity is getting more attention is because of political correctness. I wonder what you make of that. That is what this country is coming to. And I would hope that the people of goodwill in this country would step up. You know, Martin Luther King Jr., his letter from the Birmingham City Jail, talked about the fact that the people of ill will in our society was making a much better use of time than the people of goodwill. And he warned at the time that we were going to be made to repent, not just for the vitriolic words and deeds of bad people, but for the appalling silence of good people. The good people of this country have got to break their silence. They are being silent when we know full well that something untoward is taking place. In many instances, I've seen it. I live near Fort Jackson. I visit uh, Camp Lejeune, Fort Bragg. We know that some bad people have infiltrated the military, some bad people have infiltrated law enforcement officers, and the people of goodwill have got to speak up. we got to stop this, or if we don't, hmm. we are going to lose this country. And that's as simple as I can put it. Congressman Jim Clyburn, uh, very powerful words. I feel like I, uh, I learned a lot in that interview, and I really uh, thank you for making time for us tonight.